So followers of Jesus are invited into a way of life that really is different. It's distinctive because of the expectations that our welcome to one another, to strangers, even to enemies, will reflect and reenact God's welcome to us in Christ. Nowhere does scripture suggest that this life of hospitality is easy or safe, but neither does it suggest that it's optional or a gift only for a few. It is central to the life of faithful discipleship, and it is infused with grace. The focus in hospitality was on welcoming strangers, um, especially in the historical tradition. It really was oriented towards strangers. In fact, the word phylloxenia in Greek, the primary word, not the only word in the New Testament, but the main word in the New Testament, actually includes phileo and xenos, mm. right? So it's love of strangers. So you, you realize the connection with strangers a little bit more in the Greek than you do in, in English, and it becomes translated as hospitality. So I think one of the things we need to continually be asking ourselves is, who are the strangers in my world that need welcome? And then to reflect on what makes someone a stranger. Strangers are literally people without a place, or people that are out of place, away from their place. And um, the most vulnerable strangers are <coughs> ones who are disconnected from life-giving relationships and networks. Sometimes that's literal. That's, that's what you see with refugees and homeless people, right? They are, they are genuinely people without a place. Um, um, in other cases, with, with something like alienated teenagers or people with disabilities, they might have a place to live, but they don't have a, a place in which they can contribute something, in which they're valued. And so again, you know, if we start, and we'll, we'll stop and, and do this for a little while, but um, think about your own context. Um, who are the people, one of, one of the best ways to figure out who needs to be welcomed is to ask yourself, who's missing? Um, who do we overlook? Who's just not here? Um, and it's interesting, every culture has some people that it doesn't value, that it kind of overlooks. And so oftentimes those are the people I think that as Christians we're called to. Sometimes people wonder whether every stranger needs to be welcomed. And I think it, at certain levels, yes. I mean, all of us flourish in the context of welcome. Hospitality is part of what it means to be human. Um, and so when you think about something like international students or the new family in town or um, a visiting speaker or whatever, everybody flourishes in the context of welcome. Even sometimes neighbors um, can be strangers in need of welcome in this society. So if you think about the elderly neighbor who lives across the street but whose children live across the country and maybe she's recovering from surgery or something, being attentive to those kind of opportunities for ministry. Um, but strangers who are unable to purchase what they need, even to meet their basic needs, are the most vulnerable ones. Um, in, historically, hospitality was important for everyone because before there were hotels and restaurants, anybody who traveled was dependent on the kindness of strangers. They were dependent on welcome. Today, mostly we can buy welcome. We can buy the things we need when we're traveling. So the only time sort of middle class comfortable people experience sort of a need for hospitality is in an emergency situation or like when we're traveling. Um, but for the most part we can kind of take care of that. We would oftentimes choose a restaurant or a hotel rather than be dependent on the kindness of strangers. But some people don't have the resources and that's part of what makes them so vulnerable in the modern world. Uh, so that's what characterizes homeless people, refugees, migrants, um, street children, and 